How's it going, everyone? This is Samir from Team PSR, and I'm joined by my other teammates, Andy, Denny, and Amir. How's it going, yo? And today, we're doing another video on my 1996 Honda Civic. As you guys know, this car is powered by an automatic transmission, and it has been for quite some time. Uh, today, that's all gonna change. I told you guys some big plans were coming as of the last video, and these are the start of them. Most of the cars on the road in the US have automatic transmissions. Unfortunately, the same goes for my EK Civic Sedan. But today, that's all gonna change. And here we've got a donor car. This is a 1997 Honda Civic Sedan. It's an EX Sedan, top of the line. It's, it's just a gorgeous thing. I snagged this baby for $800. Uh, of course it doesn't run, so I did have to spend a few hundred dollars on a tow, taking it from about 45 minutes away to get it to my house. But look at it. I mean, frankly, it's in quite good shape considering it has 223,000 miles. I'm sure, the interior has seen better days. Um, we've already taken apart a few things. Essentially, the plan here, as you saw, it has a five-speed manual transmission, which is the entire reason I bought it. Now, you might be thinking, what the hell are you doing buying an entire car just to do a manual transmission swap? Well, actually, because I bought it for only 800 bucks and we'll be able to sell some parts off of it, it's actually gonna be more cost effective and in fact, it might even be profitable to do it this way, assuming you're willing to put in the time, which we are. And uh, as you can see, the interior is just, well, it's perfect, frankly. Uh, at least perfect for what we got going on. Another reason to get a donor car is that you need more than just the transmission and the you know the shifter assembly and you know a handful of other parts. You need you know you need the linkage. You need several brackets, which happen to be different from the automatic transmission to the manual. You need the ECU potentially, and in fact, in this case, we're hoping that we might be able to salvage the head of <clears throat> of this car's motor, which is the D16Y8. It has VTEC. My Civic does not because it's the LX with the Y7 motor, and. Uh, because it doesn't run, and because it was ran with very low oil at the end of its life, <laughs> there's, there's a high likelihood that we won't be able to salvage that part. But at the very least, the transmission should be okay. All right, and there's the beauty. Um, we got this old t-shirt in here, which the prior owner used to clean up the oil that he consistently and constantly spilled over it. Um, as it was burning it quite uh, at a quite a rapid rate, but uh, I mean, you can see here. I mean, most of this stuff is salvageable. So, um, if you're interested in any parts that we don't end up using from this car, uh, feel free to let us know. Uh, if it's small enough, I'd be you know I'd consider shipping it to you. Otherwise, if you're local to the Spokane, Washington area, we can we can link up and do something with that. But anyway, this is going to be a step by step instructional video. I mean, we're still going to be having fun as we always do, but we want it to be educational as well. So we're not going to be skipping out on anything. So the primary purpose of this first video and this, what's going to be a multi-part series is uh, removing all the parts necessary for the swap from this EJ8 over to my EJ6. And uh, this is one of the nice things about having a donor car is if you forget a little part such as, you know, a, a bracket, or, or you know, another piece of hardware, you have the car right here, you can just go back and forth between the two and grab them. Where people lose most of the time in working on a car is in their tool area. They don't know where their stuff is, they don't know what to grab, they're, they're spending hours over here. That's why you gotta keep it nice and organized, just like this. Okay guys, so obviously the main component of a manual transmission swap is the transmission itself. To get there, we have to start removing components around the area so we can actually access the transmission and start disconnecting stuff from it. So first off, we have to remove the intake.
So now that we got the car jacked up and the wheel off, we're gonna start by draining the transmission fluid so that when we take out the axles and stuff and take the transmission off, we don't make a giant mess. So down here, this is the drain bolt. It's the 3 8 drive bolt. Any 3 8 drive will fit in there. Just plug it in. This one is kind of nice it just boom, you're loose. Make sure you have your drain bucket. Take that off. Hopefully it doesn't splash everywhere. Beautiful. Off camera, I decided to disconnect the battery because at the moment, Samir is uh, taking apart the interior. But now we have to take out the axle here. So pretty much what we have to do is we have to use a giant 32 millimeter on the axle not here. Excuse me. With just like a big, sorry, <laughs> with a big uh, <laughs> impact or brake bar, however you want to do it. Like, for example, if we come over to this side, you can see the axle nut through the ceiling. You're not going to get this every single time, but you can easily break that off prior to lifting it. So pretty much I'm thinking that we just have to take that axle nut out. We have to take this uh, lower ball joint nut out, which typically has a cotter pin. It's very bad that this does not have a cotter pin. And then take out this bolt connecting the strut. And then that should be enough wiggle room for me to just pull the hub back and slide the axle out. There it is. I struggled with that a little bit more than I needed to because I took the strut bolt out first, or yeah, I took the strut bolt out first, which then kept the ball joint into the lower control arm. And basically, if you don't have the bolt in here going through the control arm here, it doesn't put enough resistance resistance to get the ball joint out. So basically, what I did was I just set the lower end of the ball joint on the metal part of the jack to load it up and then I hit it with sledgehammer on the side here and that pretty much loosens it. They make a tool where you basically put it in and you can tighten it up and it spreads it apart but I don't have enough money for that. Are you kidding me? I'd rather just use the damn hammer. Now we're ready to take the axle out of the transmission. So first step you want to make sure that the axle is somewhat free here. Like if it's too low it can't move forward. I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. You can. Okay. So yeah, it's pretty free here. So you just want to take like a pry bar, or you can even grab like a flat screwdriver, and you can just reach behind here on the axle, if you can see that. And you should be able to just push on that. And that just freed it up. That just freed it up, just in case you couldn't hear me with that thing sliding. And then it should just slide out. Like so. Morning everyone. Day two of our manual swamp project has begun. Um, we've removed a heck of a lot of parts off this car. Unless you thought that Amir and I were just sitting on our asses while Andy was doing all the real work, you can go ahead and take a look. We got you know lots of the you know dash pulled apart, glove box, center console, um, 
We got the six disc CD changer out from the, from the back, which is in the trunk. That thing's pretty cool. I didn't even know that thing existed on any uh, EK Civics. Uh, you know, we got tail lights out. I mean, there was a wire that connects the six disc CD changer all the way up to, you know, into the dash. That was a bit of a pain to get. And frankly, this car is kind of disgusting. Remember I said the interior was pristine before? Well, right now I'd say it's more like a nine out of 10. Not really a 10 out of 10, but yeah, we're just kind of using the car itself as a storage unit for these parts. And uh, again, if you want any of them, just let us know. If you're in the Eastern Washington, Idaho area, you know, if you're fairly local. If not, and it's small enough, I'd be willing to ship it to you. Um, otherwise, today, the primary goal is going to be removing uh, the transmission itself, of course, but also every remaining part necessary for the swap. Uh, and we're probably going to start out up here. So one thing for the swap is the, the intake manifold. The manual version, manual transmission version of the intake manifold is slightly different than the automatic one. How it's different, Andy will explain that to you. Those are things that are beyond my wheelhouse. But, so we will need to remove that. And then we're also sort of debating whether to remove the head right now and then remove the entirety of the engine after that when it's lighter, or if we should just kind of leave it hanging in the engine bay. Because the transmission here, you'll take a look. Here we've got uh, the mount, which is connected to the transmission. Once we remove the transmission, that's effectively one less point in which the engine is connected to the car. So it'll just be kind of loosey-goosey. So we're still trying to figure that out. But in the meantime, we're going to be digging into uh, the valve cover here. We're going to remove the valve cover just so we can see the head. And if it looks obviously terrible, then we're going to know we can't salvage it and you know say, screw it, we're going to remove it and you know, junk it or sell it for parts or whatever. Or if it looks great, then we'll worry about getting all those parts necessary for the mini-me swap, aka the Y8 to Y7 swap, or Y7 to Y8, I should say. Alright guys, as you saw that was a fairly simple process. Now let's see how this is looking. I will say it doesn't look as shiny as mine does. <laughs> then again it is you know, low on oil and it's been ran low oil slash no oil for some time. As you saw in like the last 10 seconds I was just Spinning the engine over to take a look at the camshaft because unfortunately this engine was run low on oil and in theory if it was run on oil long enough everything's not being lubricated properly there's unnecessary wear on it and unfortunately I believe that is the case here and I'm going to see if I can get a good camera angle for you guys. As you can kind of see we can't really get the best camera angle on it. This camshaft doesn't look too great so I'm not even going to go through with the head swap on this specific head just like it's really hard to see on camera but it's fairly marred and it's just not worth it in my opinion there are some that look even worse than this so we are not going to be using this head for the head swap well that is a shame but of course you know we, we expected that this to be a possibility and I built that possibility into the pricing of this car when I when I made my offer for it um, you know at the very least uh, you know, we're going to get the manual parts out of it, which is the key. I mean, that alone is going to save us two seconds, zero to 60. Legit. <laughs> I think the difference is, it's like, I remember reading Car and Driver's uh, article, you know, very recently, and they said that the EX Auto was something like 11, you know, 10.8, 10.7 seconds, somewhere like that, and to 60 with the automatic. 
and then the EX manual was like 8.7. So having a manual transmission alone is gonna make it much faster. Of course, I was hoping for that little bump in power, but you know, we'll save that for another day. Next up, we're gonna be coming over here and we're gonna be taking off the exhaust manifold. We first have to take off this cover, of course, and then there's a bunch of studs and stuff, but we'll be showing you that. And then we're also gonna to have to take off the intake manifold for the swap. We don't have to do that for the transmission. So if you're just watching this to purely learn how to take out the transmission, don't even worry about that part. The reason we have to do this is because I guess the manuals have the idle air control valve on the rear of the intake manifold. And then if we come over here to Samir's vehicle, you can see this automatic version of the manifold has nothing back here, right? There's no, you can actually see where Honda mills it out almost like that's kind of where it bolts up. Yeah, so we'll have to swap that because if we don't do that, we'll throw codes and that's the last thing we want.
FYI guys, uh, in case you didn't know, when you pull off that coolant line, you're going to get some coolant spilling out, so make sure you're ready. Okay guys, we got the intake manifold out now, and there were a couple bolts that I had to go underneath to get, like for this support bracket. If you can look down here, there's just two bolt holes down there. I intentionally left this in there so I could show you guys. And then next step, we're going to be moving back from the transmission. We're going to be unhooking all these connectors, unhooking starter wires, getting this out of the way, getting that off, getting... Pretty much anything attached to the transmission that's not holding it up is going to come off.
Now that we got most of these stuff off of the transmission wiring wise, we were able to just move the harness over, up and out. Now we're free to all of the bell housing and bolts and stuff. I was trying to take the clutch line out. As you can see, the slave cylinders attached. There was like a couple clips, a couple bolts there, a couple nuts there. And then we got to here, which the bolts for the clutch fluid reservoir is. The nuts are on the inside, so I figured we could start on the pedals. Um, it's gonna be kind of hard to get the shot. There's some air. It's gonna be hard to get that money shot, but basically we're gonna start with the brake pedal and right there we need to remove that cotter pin. That's step no that's step one. So we're gonna remove that and then I'll get back to you guys. Come on, car, just give him a break. Alright guys, I was able to get that cotter pin out. I just uh cut it up top with some dikes, reach around the steering column. Up there. And then I used some long needle nose to pull from down here. Now we just have to basically push that pin out. I'm just gonna use my dikes again to hit it out. And then, uh, grab from the other side and pull it out. We're looking up in the dash in one of the most uncomfortable positions I've ever been in. But there's that little bolt there. We have to loosen that and then, man, I hope you guys can see a spring around here, but we have to remove that spring and I'll get back to you guys. All right guys, got the brake pedal out. And now that it's out, I'm gonna kind of show you more what I was talking about because that was probably a horrible view. Here's the spring. One end attaches into that side of the pedal and then one end attaches somewhere up underneath the dash. I just used long needle nose pliers and pushed this side up to get it up and over so this part was still attached to the pedal. Then here's that bolt I was talking about. I just went on this side and then spun this side off, was able to get it out, and it just pulls out after that. I also forgot to mention that we took off this under panel. Um, I didn't look at it before, but I'm assuming it would be a lot easier if you do take this out because then you get a lot more space. But now we are going to move on to the clutch pedal. So in our scenario, we don't have to necessarily take the clutch out of the bracket because it seems to be on the automatics. The bracket is exactly the same. So we just had to move the brake pedal over to the automatic vehicle. But in this case, we're gonna loosen that nut there. And there's another nut on this side that I might be able to get. You can kind of see it there. And that'll allow us to remove the clutch master cylinder as well as take some fasteners out to help take the bracket off. The other one is right up there. You can kind of see it behind that little rod. And we just have to disconnect this connector and that should be it to taking this whole bracket out. All right guys, we got both pedal assemblies out. Brake pedal, clutch pedal. I was kind of right on the clutch pedal. So it goes in like this. You have the one nut here, one nut, here, and that connects through clutch master cylinder. You have the bolt up here, and then I just didn't see the second connector, so you have two connectors to worry about. So the reason I only took the brake pedal out, I don't know if I explained this prior, but it seems to be that the bracket inside the automatic car is exactly the same, and as so is the gas pedal, just the brake pedal is different. So I just took that out, we're gonna swap the pedals when we get to that point, and then <coughs> carry on. Now that we got that all done and that's all loose, now we can look down here <laughs> and see that the clutch master is loose right here. You can see that. It's not up against the firewall anymore. So now it seems to be we just have to take out these two bolts um, and then disconnect them from here and there and we should be on our way. We managed to get the clutch master cylinder out. And just to show you guys, this is the new one. Straight from Honda, of course. Here's the part number if you need it. One of the few components in the whole clutch system that Honda still makes, they make this in the slave cylinder. So we need to save the reservoir and we're probably gonna do a new hose because this thing feels brittle. We also managed to sneak out the clutch line, which Honda does not make new, so Make sure you grab this if you're swapping. And another thing to note is 
before you take everything out, make sure you loosen these uh, fittings because if you disconnect everything, or I made the same mistake, I disconnected the slave cylinder. I had to put it back on to loosen it from the slave cylinder end and because you know, they get just pretty tight over time. So we are going to try to remove the nuts off the back of the catalytic converter so we can just take out that whole exhaust piece going forward. So there's three nuts, one there, one there, and then on the other side. And then there's two nuts near the oil pan there that we have to remove because the exhaust braces off the engine. So we're gonna get started on that. Okay guys, we were originally gonna take the bolts and nuts off of the back of the cat, but those stripped out, so due to time, we're just gonna take them off here. And I already broke them loose just to make sure that they wouldn't strip out. Now that we got everything disconnected underneath that we need to, now we're just gonna come over here and disconnect this last little bolt that I didn't see. We're just gonna let that fall out. And now that should allow us to drop that down. There it is. Now we're to the shifter linkages. So step one, you want to, this is how you're gonna find it. You're gonna find this cover forward. You're just gonna wanna pull it back and there's this little pin right here that you're just gonna want to uh, hammer out. Let me see if I can get my light in a good spot. I'm just using a little screwdriver and a little hammer, but just. Now that we got this little clip out, now we can go for the actual pin. Okay guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. This part is gonna be a major bitch. Um, we've been spending like half an hour on this. But we finally found the perfect bolt. And I already hit it in some because we kept trying too many times. But now we can get the rest of, the, rest of it the way out. Here it is. Now should just be able to uh, pull out. There we go. Now we're gonna take the other sh shifter linkage off. Thankfully, it's not nearly as hard. Should just be this one bolt, which we're just gonna zap right off. Pull that out. There we go, pretty fucking easy. Now we're gonna take these two off. These basically bolt into the bell housing. So this is gonna be one of the final steps under here. So we're gonna wanna loosen these. Hopefully you guys can see that. Now we're going to be taking this little plate off, so it's just a, uh, seems to be 112, and 110. 
Okay, now we are going to remove these two bolts for the rear training mount. Just a 19 millimeter. Guys, we're going to take the bolt out of the rear mount here. Uh, we remove those two lower ones that are over here. You can kind of see my hand there. So we're just going to remove this one. Another 19. There you have it. Now we're going to remove the bolt actually going to the mount here. And this one is a 17 mil. This one shouldn't be too terrible. After removing that one, oops, use that washer, bolt and washer. And then we're gonna remove this bolt right here, just to make this easier. That's my bad. I should have done that from the start instead of just trying to force it through. And here we have the rear training mount. Now we're gonna take these three bolts out of the transmission that are for the passenger side mount. And these are 317s. And here we are. So I was trying to get this loose and I accidentally ripped the mount out. So I had to put two bolts of the bracket back in, the ones that are going this way to get this out. And this is a 19. Quick and easy. And so now there's a bolt here and a bolt here. You'll be able to see them. They're uh, 14s. that passenger side mount along with the motor mount and here's the rib piece should be in there uh, yeah now that we got that mount out and that mount out we can start moving forward so we're gonna start taking out these bell housing bolts right there's one here there's one right there there's one underneath this there's one right here and then I believe Yep, those are all the ones up top. So I'm just gonna loosen those really quick and then we'll move underneath. It looks like that there's just this one bolt right here and this one's also a 17. Also, second note, you can put a mount back in to make this a little easier because if you follow directly, uh, the engine will move as you can see. But I'm not even gonna bother with that. I'm just gonna hit it really hard. Now I'm getting my jack underneath the engine on the angle part of the oil pan so it doesn't crumble under its own weight, just to support it for when we take the transmission off. So now let's move up above. Now that we got the jack underneath, we're gonna start taking apart this mount. So step one, we're gonna want to loosen the actual bolt holding the bracket to the mount. And see, with that jack underneath, you probably saw it on video, it slightly fell. So now we just have to raise it a little bit and we can get this bolt out. Now that we got the bolt out, we're gonna focus on the bracket here. It's just three 17s, two nuts, one bolt. Shouldn't be too easy with the big impact gun.
Then after you remove those four fasteners, you should be able to get the bracket out. Now we're going to get the actual mount part out of the way, just to free up some space for overhands or whatever. And these should be 17s as well. Alright guys, and then after you remove those three bolts, that I only felt two, you should have them out now. Now we're going to remove those bell housing bolts that I loosened earlier. If you forgot where they are, just kind of rewind a little bit, but here we go. And here are the bell housing bolts up here. We got all the bell housing bolts out, so now it should, we should just be able to jiggle it a little bit. And uh, should kind of, come on. We started to separate the transmission. It was really stuck, because as you can see, this dowel pin almost seems like rusty or something. Like, it almost seems like something is holding it on at the bottom, but I know it's not. I've double checked it three times and there's no more bolts. So let's get on with it. And there we go guys, I got the transmission out. Now that we got the transmission off, we have to take the pressure plate off, which you need a 12.10, right? It doesn't need to be an impact. You're not gonna be using it all the time, but 12.10, there's six of them. After you get all six out, you should be able to just pull it off along with the clutch. Oof. Here's that how that clutch looks. Uh, not ideal, you can see it fraying here and there as well. Not great. Now that we got the pressure plate and clutch out of the way, now we have these six bolts holding the flywheel on. They are also a 12.17 just for your knowledge. All right, here are the six. And after you loosen those, this should just come off like that. That was almost a little too easy, but that's how you take off the flywheel. And that's how you remove a manual transmission out of a 96 through 2000 Honda Civic. Later on, we'll be showing you how to remove the automatic version of the vehicle when we go to swap Samir's Civic. But um, now to do a little update. Unfortunately, due to time constraints, we probably won't be able to do the swap up until spring. But the good news is we have all the parts that we need for when the time comes and we'll have a video for you guys then. Thank you guys for watching. I hope it was great. I hope it was informational. And we'll see you guys next time. See ya! Bye. And as you can see, the interior is mint. <laughs> 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 yeah.
Oh. Oh. Just out. All this space. Oh. I don't know, isn't it great? Emmer! Dude, it's literally on video now. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> oh, <it actually. laughs> Okay, let's... Let's just do it. It's like it takes no extra time to film it. If it doesn't end up working, then we won't use it. I mean, it definitely takes extra time. The point is, just do the work. <laughs> let's just do it. 